Hi, my name is Kathleen Lisson. I am a lymphedema therapist and board certified massage therapist. We're here at my practice in San Diego today. And I help people after plastic surgery to reduce their swelling and fibrosis. I'm also author of the Plastic Surgery Recovery Handbook and I'm very active on Instagram and Facebook. So because I'm so Insta active on Instagram and Facebook, I get a lot of people who aren't my clients but are still asking me questions about their recovery. And I wanna talk in a little bit of detail. I have my um, list right here to share with you of the reasons that um, the answers, possible answers to the big question, why does my post-op massage hurt so much, Kathleen? Um, so we'll go over these and I'll give uh, you a few tips on conversations you can start with your lymphatic massage therapist to see if you can make the post-op massage a little bit less painful. So the first reason um, why your post-op massage might hurt so much is because you might not actually be having massage. You might be having incisional drainage. So this happens um, to uh, some clients go ahead and book these after their surgery um, and it's not massage, it's actually uh, the person is going to be pushing fluid out of their incisions, um, pushing fluid into their drains. Um, it's extremely painful and I'll share one experience of someone that has had it. And um, in my opinion, it's absolutely not necessary for um, a complete and wonderful recovery from your plastic surgery. And in addition, it's not even done. Um, all plastic surgeons do not recommend the, these, only a few do. And um, it's very hard to find someone that will do this outside of the big plastic surgery centers like on the East Coast. So this is um, a message. I had a conversation with a lady who had this um, incisional drainage procedure and she was kind enough to share with me um, her experience. So she said, I'm five, dose po I'm five days post-op and had my first incisional or lymphatic massage. So she didn't know which one it actually was. Um, based on how she describes it, it was definitely an incisional massage. Lymphatic massage is gentle. It has just gentle skin stretching strokes and the fluid goes into um, your, your urinary system and then you pee it out. Um, so what she said was, I have two drains in, one in the back and the front. Um, she had several different types of plastic surgery, which she says, and her experience is, anyways, I do not want to go back. I can't relax all day thinking about it. I literally was grabbing the sheets, kicking around a bit, cussing, and at the end I was sobbing. I had burst into real tears. I didn't even do that with my natural birth. Um, so this is very frustrating as a lymphatic massage therapist because what she's describing, the pain levels are definitely not ever happening with lymphatic massage. Lymphatic massage is a gentle skin stretching stroke. Um, it's a specific type of massage that is talked about very specifically and very precisely in the liposuction textbooks, including Hoyos and Prendergast, um, high definition body sculpting, which is a top textbook in the industry. It's also mentioned very specifically as a type of massage um, in the manual lymphatic drainage textbooks, including the one by Foldy. Um, so that is uh, incisional drainage. It's usually extremely painful for the client. Um, in my opinion, to my experience, it's not necessarily, it's not necessary for recovery. It is not even given widely throughout the United States. Um, so let's move on to some things that actually are massage. And the first one would be um, if you had fibrosis after not getting enough manual lymphatic drainage um, right after surgery. So right after surgery, which is interesting because she did start at the right time. She had her first massage five days post-op. I usually will start clients four or five days post-op with their lymphatic massage. And what it does is it's a gentle type of massage. Um, it can be a little uncomfortable if you're right after surgery and you know, you're still in a lot of pain from the surgery, but it's never going over into actually painful. Um, and it's guiding the swelling into the body's lymphatic system so the body can eliminate it out by urination. And your body's lymphatic system is doing this anyways. That's why you're urinating so much 
after surgery so many times so often and that's why they actually give you a hole in your garment so you don't have to put it on take it off so many times because they know you will be urinating because it's your lymphatic system pushing the fluid back into circulation which allows it to be urinated out so if you don't have enough of this good good mld massage um, it's not taking these waste products out from the area where you had your liposuction. If the fibrin is allowed to remain in the area, it's not pulled out into the lymphatic system and recycled, then it's going to stay there and start forming fibrosis. And then you have to get into fibrosis techniques instead of just MLD techniques. So this, if you want, a lot of people ask me this question, how can I prevent fibrosis? Should I use these textured foams that we'll talk about later to prevent fibrosis? No. The best thing to prevent fibrosis is wear your faha, follow what your plastic surgeon is saying for the post-op care, wear your liposuction foams, and get your MLD. That is my best advice on reducing the amount of fibrosis, if any, that you're eventually going to get after surgery. Also, I have seen fibrosis if you have an incorrectly fitting faha. If your compression garment is too long, if it's not a really good fit for your body, that extra tissue, that extra um, fabric is going to bind and potentially cause lines, indents, and that is going to be a little tough to get out for the massage therapist to help smooth you out if a compression garment has pushed in your tissue, in your skin, and given you these lines from the faha. So what I do is I recommend wearing foam inside of the faha. And this is an individual decision. I can't just um, find everyone on the internet and give them like a one size fits all solution to the foams inside your faha. It has to be a discussion between you and your lymphatic massage therapist. She'll see where you're holding fluid. She'll talk to you about where your foams are, maybe add some little extra foams in the area, um, and that will really help. The other thing is fibrosis. Um, that forms if you don't wear the foam. So if you are lucky enough to have a custom faha that's perfectly fit, that has the ideal level of compression at each segment of your body after plastic surgery, you probably won't need foams. But if you are buying a faha, you're getting the stage one and the stage two, and it came in like a small, medium, large, extra small, extra large, that is not a custom fit for you. So how do we make it a custom fit? We put foams in and then as the garment reduces your swelling and you get smaller, these foams start expanding and keep that ideal level of compression on your body. So that's why I love foam so much. And then the, the next reason might be because you have fibrosis and your lymphatic massage therapist is not working with you in between appointments to help reduce that fibrosis through textured compression. So you know I am a big fan of textured compression. You've seen my Instagram, you've seen how I use all these different items. I use edema wear for the arms and the legs for lipo. I use uh, many lymph pads if you have some fibrosis in your abdomen. I'll use Mobyderm for a more um, customized shape for fibrosis. Um, anywhere where you have liposuction in the thighs, in the abdomen, in the arms, in the back, in the bra roll. I'll, I'll use this textured compression, any of these, a combination of these, to help gently massage. You see how this is a, it's a texture, and then it'll make indents in your skin, and then as you move throughout the day, it's these foam pieces are going to gently massage your fibrosis. This is how I get my results. This is how I get results from doing one hour of a massage that the client comes back week after week saying this is the highlight of my week is getting this massage. Even though we're doing fibrosis work as well as MLD on the client, they're still enjoying it because they're wearing these foams for however long we talk about however long they need to wear them every day and they're getting the results they're emailing me back, they're coming at their next visit and saying the fibrosis is so much softer, I'm so much less tight, I can move around easier. And it's because of not just me trying to work on them for a one hour period once a week, it's me working on them plus their self massage, plus this fibrosis, um, this fibrosis textured compression 
that's specifically formulated to reduce fibrosis. It was these these compressions were made and created to reduce fibrosis after a condition called lymphedema, and they work easily as well to reduce fibrosis after liposuction. Um, and the last thing that I would say is um, definitely have a conversation if you think this is happening to you with your lymphatic massage therapist. If you're having fibrosis massage without the therapist warming or preparing the tissue. So think of it as you're going for a run or you're going out to the gym to lift heavy and you just walk straight into the gym and you pull on the weights right as soon as you get to the gym. Is that going to be more painful than if you were smart and you went ahead and warmed up on the mat, got the body flowing, got the temperature increasing, got the blood flowing? Even is in a regular massage session that we learn in massage school, you start with effleurage before you work into doing the actual massage strokes. Um, so this is, your therapist should know um, to warm the skin, to prepare the skin before we do a little bit of deeper fibrosis work. And if you feel like it's not happening enough and you feel like it's getting too hard too soon, um, definitely just have a conversation. Just say, hey, could we do a little bit more um, warming up and preparing of the tissue? This does not mean it's a light fluff and buff massage. This does not mean it's uh, this, um, it's, you know, feather stroke tickling massage. I'm not talking about that we need that. I'm talking about that we need really focused preparation of the tissue before we go in and do fibrosis type of treatments. This is just what we will also do in a client if we were giving them any type of massage. This needs to happen in the fibrosis massage as well because we're preparing the skin. What I want the client's brain, the client's body to think is that this is a massage at a level of pressure that's productive. Their body thinks we're really getting things done. And this is the same thing as we do at the gym. When you go to the gym, you lift the weight and you know which weight is going, you can lift it 10 to 12 times with good form and then eventually it's going to be productive and you're going to gain muscle. And you know the first time you lift a weight that's too heavy for you, that this is the type of pressure you're putting on your body that could potentially end in injury. So your body is going to try to protect you from getting injured. So I want the level of massage, the feeling, the emotion that comes from it to be, she's like really getting in there. We're really doing some productive work today. I think this is going to help me because the second the client starts like bracing against it and going like, it's fine, just do whatever you need to do. That is not the um, type of chemicals that the body's preparing. That's not, not the type of emotional mood that I want the client to have. That is not going to be as productive as if the client comes into their massage, gets an effective treatment and leaves saying to themselves, this has been the highlight of my week. I feel so much looser. I feel so much more range of motion. This is really helping me. That's what the client should say to you as a lymphatic massage therapist each and every time after they have the massage or it's not worth rebooking that client because we're not giving them the treatment that they deserve. So this is my list. Um, and I guess I talked to both my fellow lymphatic massage therapists. I also talked to the clients and this is a great beginning if you are a client to have a conversation with your lymphatic massage therapist. And if you're a lymphatic massage therapist, this may be if you find that this is happening to you too often and you're not kind of going over these things with the clients, I hope that it inspires you to learn more about textured compression, learn more about fibrosis techniques that aren't especially painful, and um, just get the continuing education that you need to perfect your craft to give the best massage to every client that comes to you. Thank you and have a great day.